ex-Hurricane Martin blowing up in the North Atlantic on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 4th. So right now we have a few cyclones active, Lisa still holding on as a depression, what's left of Martin, extra tropical now, and Tropical Storm 4S which has been designated in the South Indian Ocean in the Australian region, Um, and that is our 85th storm. In the Atlantic it's day 157 of hurricane season and we've got Lisa which is about to enter the Bay of Campeche now um, and the other two systems are two uh, low chances of development at the moment but that could change and X Martin out there in the far north Atlantic. The Eastern Pacific remains quiet, no areas of interest but one or two little rumours that there might be a new AOI in the next few days that might bear watching so East Pacific fans maybe it's not over just yet uh, but at the moment it is still empty. The Western Pacific has thrown up another small area of interest near the Mariana Islands, a very small chance of development and it would be a very brief development if it did happen um, just before it reaches Guam and um, Saipan. And then into the Indian Ocean, Tropical Storm 4S, there it is, uh, well to the northwest of the Cocos Islands. Um, and is going to be moving southwest away from any land areas and will probably completely remain out at sea, maybe get close to Diego Garcia further down the line. Let's check the satellite imagery and this is what the Atlantic is looking like right now. Uh, Lisa not very well distinguishable on that imagery, it looks like it's part of a massive low pressure complex with all of those uh, convective tops but Lisa is still actually a system of its own and we'll see it more closely on imagery in a moment. And off to the uh, eastern pacific, dry air still dominant uh, but a few little uh, scraggly bits of convection blowing up there uh, that won't uh, end up turning into anything in the intertropical convergence zone. You may have also noticed in the Atlantic you couldn't see Martin, it was so far away now and it is on the very edge nearly of the GO16 viewing field. There it is, an enormous system now with um, convective tops blowing all the way up towards Greenland which could get a hefty amount of rain from this on the eastern side of the uh, enormous island that it is and Martin will then head off towards the north and then east and will probably brush past the British Isles and Iceland. Looking down in the tropics though, you can see here on off the Yucatan Peninsula what's left of Lisa. Still a TD right now and it's hard, still hard to distinguish even on those late visibles where the centre of circulation would be. Uh, and a little bit of convection here and there. Rotation is a little bit lacking uh, but you can see a little bit better there on that visible imagery. I think it's still fair to call it a tropical depression right now. Will it hold on for a little bit longer in the Bay of Campeche then? Probably a little bit uh, it's hard to tell uh, some models now picking up on it again with it might have a little bit of a longer life and you can't rule out maybe a five mile an hour increase in wind you never know it might get back to tropical storm status for a very brief stint uh, but its life is sure to end in that southern part of the gulf looking at the western pacific this is what it looks like right now and you can just about make out that disturbance there just off guam um, another flurry of uh, clouds moved off ahead of it and uh, down in the uh, southern philippines as well uh, what's left of banyan there still some of its clouds uh, are causing probably quite some substantial rainfall there in the southern philippine islands looking at the indian ocean you can see that tropical cyclone 4s Uh, looked much better earlier on in the day. It looks like it's fallen apart a little bit in the later hours or it's become a little bit squashed but it certainly was churning up earlier on uh, and it certainly has more of a chance later. And down in the Australian region things looking fairly quiet. A few thunderstorms blowing up in the Northern Territory and on the Cape York Peninsula and some more storms just north of Fiji. But generally a quiet picture down there in the Southern Hemisphere. 
So moving on towards the sea surface temperatures right now and this is how it currently looks and you can see 30 degrees Celsius almost in some of those locations on the coast of Mexico and easily 28 for a large part of that region for any potential late season activity. The southern part of the Gulf of Mexico still looking decent as well where Lisa is pushing 28 degrees Celsius and the main development region of the Atlantic is still there just in case anything was to develop. The Caribbean still looking hot as well, Lisa didn't affect it in any way there so it's good to go again for any more potential systems. Indian Ocean still staying warm in the high 20s there, pushing 30 degrees off the coast of Myanmar and down towards the South Indian Ocean staying warm as well and getting warmer, uh, 28 degrees probably or nearly that much for 4S. In the Western Pacific still decent temperatures there as well, particularly in the Philippine Sea, we're used to this. Um, we tend to see good conditions all throughout the year, uh, but still pushing 30 degrees in a few areas, late season storms can't be ruled out. At the moment, it's still generally quiet. The anomalies above average in the western Pacific, La Nina still well in effect in the eastern part. The Atlantic though, pretty much above average across the board there, where Martin is right now, it's around about half and half. Uh, and where Lisa is, it's just a little bit above average, maybe one or two degrees Celsius above. Loop current still doing its thing as well into the Gulf of Mexico, and you can even see it here on the oceanic heat content. Um, viewer. Uh, still the Caribbean is where it's at, um, holding on to the last high amounts of OHC. The Eastern Pacific pretty much shutting down, the Western Pacific is uh, a much less active than it was earlier and then you take a look down towards the deep equatorial region is where all of that heat activity is and sometimes you can get really low latitude storms that develop in the late season. Well. Here is a look at Martin with hurricane force winds right now and probably category 2 force winds according to this GFS initialization. It gives way to an even broader system after that but you could see Martin moving off towards the east there and affecting the British Isles and Iceland and maybe even hurricane force winds for the southern tip of Greenland but there you see it moving through Ireland and Scotland with tropical storm force winds or storm force winds and then shooting off up to Iceland. As for Lisa, you can see it just about there for a brief period on the GFS, possibly regaining tropical storm status. And then this big mess off the coast of uh, Puerto Rico up towards the Sargasso Sea. GFS thinks that might split up into maybe one or two different systems that go on to affect Florida. A bit of an invasion going on there. Um, I doubt we'll see that very much, but I think we could get one system that might pop out of this real mess that's currently forecasted. You can see there a borderline tropical storm making landfall in central Florida right at the end of that loop. Also in the five day period looking at 4S you can see it there, GFS not particularly keen, it's only borderline tropical storm there and it does get there again later on. It does strengthen a little bit actually in the later part of that five day period as it just drifts westward and then stops and sort of stalls a little bit at the end of that five day period. Um, certainly isn't going to become a very powerful storm they can happen at this time of year but it is quite rare um, and this could well get the next name in uh, on the Meteo France naming list and this is the uh, rainfall expectations over the next seven days for the general Atlantic region you can just about see Lisa's influence over there on the left hand side as well maybe three or four inches of rain still for parts of um, uh, Vera Cruz and eastwards and looking at the uh, other region though that's going to be affected by this big complex of uh, disturbances uh, whether it becomes a tropical cyclone or not we could be looking at significant amounts of rain maybe with some areas there of 12 inches possibly near the uh, Virgin Islands and 6 inches there as well Puerto Rico much less but even along the eastern coast of Florida possibly 3 or 4 inches as a result of this big disturbance and down to the Bahamas as well 4.3 inches there and 3.8 around the Turks and Caicos Islands so Certainly something to watch out for from a rainfall point of view, thankfully the highest amounts remain offshore. Into the longer range, day 5 to 10, this is what the Atlantic looks like now and the Eastern Pacific throws up a storm there as well there out of the blue and the Atlantic tries to throw up another storm there as well off the Lesser Antilles and another circulation there in the Western Caribbean that might start to form. My goodness, that would be a turn up for the books if we saw that. Three potential tropical cyclones active at the same time there. One East Pack and two Atlantic. Be a nightmare for forecasters, uh, but that is what the medium range GFS is currently showing. 
nothing elsewhere, and at this point, we can take a look at the Force 13 merch store. Scan the barcode if you haven't already uh, to take a look at our offerings. We also have full season and individual animations on request, bespoke, custom made, and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts, still available as well. Well, into the silly range, this is what we have in store for day 10 to 16. Uh, that double trouble or triple trouble there with another tropical storm moving into the Yucatan and those two hurricanes on either side and that storm regenerating in the Bay of Campeche as well and that hurricane in the Atlantic doing a proper recurve there and off it goes. More like a September system rather than November one. I'm not sure whether we're going to see that happen and the Eastern Pacific storm eventually winds its way towards Mexico and does make landfall I think or oh, just about. In fact, I don't think it did make it in the end, uh, but a very interesting look there at the la latter phases of this Atlantic hurricane season if that was to happen. Meanwhile, in the Western Pacific, the GFS also throws up a very powerful typhoon, typical late season carnage that sometimes occurs here, straight into Luzon as a small but powerful Category 4 storm, and then through there still a Category 1 in the South China Sea, so that is almost... Uh, similar to the Tsunagi in a way, but much stronger in terms of track, I should say, uh, moving just north of Catanduanes and then on towards Aurora. That is extremely long range. I wouldn't put a single um, bit of thought into that just yet. Hurricane Week is coming up in just three weeks' time on the 28th of November. Um, three and a half weeks until that happens, and don't we know it? Working really hard to get everything ready for the event. It's going to be a real cool week of activity. Meanwhile, on November the 4th, 1996, we had a slew and slurry of activity across the Eastern Hemisphere, but the strongest storm right now was Melanie Bellamine. Fantastic name, it rolls straight off the tongue. A Category 4 powerful cyclone that was in the Southern Hemisphere in the Indian Ocean. I was saying just before, it's quite rare, but there is one of them. We also had Tropical Storm 7B in the Bay of Bengal, which was about to rapidly intensify. And check that out, three unnamed systems in the Western Pacific. 38W indeed, uh, shows how much storms they went through that year. Meanwhile, back to this year, and the next name on the Atlantic naming list now is Nicole. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Seymour, and in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone. And we're getting closer and closer to the yearly average for storms, and I think it looks like we're going to exceed that now. In the Western Pacific, the next named storm is Yamaneko, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Mandus. And down in the Southern Hemisphere, it's going to be an interesting uh, few days to see whether Australia will name a storm. It's Darien next up on their naming list. The Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Chaniso. And in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.